Canada finds itself in a very awkward position as it continues to double down on its support for Ukraine, despite the Trump administration indicating that it's going to end its support for Ukraine moving forward. Hi, everyone. My name is Christopher. I'm the host of the Open Mind Show right here on YouTube, and I'm trying to inject a level of moderation in our hyper-politicized world. So if you're liking my content, definitely hit that like button, subscribe, share, tell all your friends, let me know how I'm doing in the comment section below, folks. By the way, I might be a bit slow off the mic. I just came from the dentist and half of my face is frozen. But that said, the show continues here at Open Minds. But folks, I want to first begin by saying that U.S. support amongst Americans of the Ukraine war is diminishing. And this is very interesting to see because we're also seeing that here in Canada. Republicans are far more likely to say that the U.S. is providing too much support to Ukraine, with 42% saying so, while only 13% of Democrats agree with that statement. As well, Republicans and Republican-leading independents have long been less likely than Democrats to see Russia's invasion as a major threat to U.S. interests. Just 19% say the invasion is a major threat compared to 2% of Democrats. But here's what's really interesting. 27% of Americans say the U.S. is providing too much assistance to Ukraine, with another 25% categorizing it as just about right, and 18% saying it's just not enough. Now, that 27%, I think, is highly underrated, because here in Canada, those numbers are much higher. Now, what's interesting here, too, Canada is providing a lot of support to Ukraine as a percent of our national defense budget. Folks, just for your own awareness, check this out. Canada has committed over $19.5 billion in total assistance to Ukraine, including $4.5 billion in military assistance, although it's not clear whether or not that $4.5 billion is a uh, 24-25 budget item or if it's cumulative. If, in fact, it is a cumul- if it is, in fact, a budget item for 24-25, that would mean that represents 13.3% of our total military budget here in Canada. 13.3%, that dwarfs the United States uh, percent of support for Ukraine. I believe it's around 6% of its total budget goes towards Ukraine and defending Ukraine. So we're nearly, we're over double what uh, the United States is providing to Ukraine. But someone please fact check me on those numbers because it's not clear whether or not the 4.5 is a new budget item or if in fact it is cumulative. But here's what the Prime Minister of Canada had to say at a recent NATO meeting just yesterday, I believe, or was it today? Here's what I have to say in doubling down on our support for Ukraine. That understands how important the rules-based order is in protecting all of us. And Russia's illegal invasion is not just about redrawing lines in the map in their neighborhood. It's about reintroducing into the world, long after it had disappeared, the idea that might makes right once again. If Russia succeeds in gaining an inch of territory in Ukraine, because of their illegal invasion, countries around the world will look at their historical grievances around a border, will look at the fact that perhaps they have a slightly larger military than their neighbor, and wonder if it isn't time now to redraw lines on a map. So Trudeau doubles down on this kind of Russia invasion as an indicator that it will be a copycat type used by other countries thinking potentially of redrawing their own boundaries with neighboring countries as well, drumming up support about why NATO members should continue to support Ukraine to fight off Russia on its eastern border. But what's interesting here is that, again, Canada has really been adamant about its support for Ukraine, but it seems to also mirror many civil society organizations and groups who have who have been fighting for more support for Ukraine. Now, this is interesting. This is from the Ukrainian Canadian Congress. They recently had an annual general assembly meeting, I believe. And this is what they said at their meeting. It's on YouTube, by the way, if you want to check it out. These are some of the policies that they've advocated. $12.4 billion in financial assistance. $5 billion 
in G7 Extraordinary Revenue Acceleration, $4.5 billion in military assistance. Everything you're seeing right here on the screen is a direct result of the UCC, Ukrainian Canadian Congress's advocacy, the policies that they've advocated, and the results of what they've advocated for. Now, what's interesting here is it's quite rare to find a civil society organization that gets that level of support from the federal government. Usually governments typically take what civil society organizations say and they modify their policies as a result. But in this case, it seems almost a bit too similar to what civil society organizations like Ukrainian Canadian Congress have advocated for. And I know there have been discussions about Christian Freeland being able to speak Ukrainian to Ukrainian officials and molding our policy around that. But what's interesting here, too, is I wonder how Canada will pivot their national policy when it comes to Ukraine if, in fact, the United States is looking to end its support for Ukraine and end its support with the current war between Russia and Ukraine. So I would actually be curious to see what Trudeau's policies will be moving forward. But more importantly, Canada is set, set to go into an election in 2025, October 2025. I would be curious to know from conservatives inside Canada, if they are like the Republicans down in the United States that are looking to lessen the support from Canada to Ukraine. Now, the reason I say this is because if in fact it is that conservatives and more conservative-minded people in Canada echo what Republicans are, are advocating for in the United States, which is the support for Ukraine is too much, that puts Canada in a very unique position. Because to me, I still remember a time when it was Democrats and liberals arguing for less, <laughs> less war and, uh, you know, this idea of continuing to not support an endless war. And it was Republicans and conservatives who were saying we need to maintain the international order of things. So I'd be curious to know what you think. Do you think more conservatives in Canada will be advocating for less support for Ukraine? come 2025, 26, and moving forward, following the lead from the United States. What do you think about Canada's current support for Ukraine? Do you think it's too much, enough, or not enough? Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and let me know what you think about what Trudeau and the Trudeau government will need to do to pivot if, in fact, Trump and the Trump administration move forward and say that they're ending their support for Ukraine. Let me know what you think in the comment section below.